Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. Thank you very much for joining me today for another episode. This is Inspiration, that's a podcast about knitting, yarn dyeing. I'm Christelle and I'm a French indie dyer. I live near Paris. Um, so if you are new to the podcast, uh, there is a new episode uploaded to YouTube every Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. Paris time. There's a newsletter sent out at the same time to tell you in details what's in the shop this week. And there's a shop update every Monday afternoon. Um, except it today. Today there's no shop update. Sorry guys. There's something else I'm going to uh, explain in a few minutes, but no shop update today. Um, and if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me again today. It's, a, it's always a pleasure to be back with you for another episode. Today there is a change of scenery, you might have noticed, it's not my garden, I told you my garden was tiny, I'm at my parents in Normandy. So uh, I'm in their garden, which is I think 10 times the size of my garden, um, and I'm just enjo enjoying the outside, I'm not filming inside the house because it's packed with children and um, and my parents and uh, not much place to be, you know be recording in peace so i'm outside in the garden i'm just hoping it's not going to rain because the sky is quite gray and we've been experiencing a lot of rain since yesterday which is a good change compared to the uh, i mean the hot hot days we had um this week it's been very hot in france very hot so um, we have a respite from that. Uh, we've been having very much colder temperatures. When we left for my parents on Thursday afternoon, it was so hot, it was still very, very hot. And I don't know why I decided to still include some sweaters for the kids. Uh, I took my shawl and uh, I was I, I mean, I was so right to do so. My husband told me, really, you think we're going to need this? Don't you feel the, the how hot it is? It's sticky. I mean, it was... And I mean, we've arrived here. It was a bit less hot. And the day after, just cold, guys. <laughs> Not even 20 degrees, okay? Like in the morning, like 16 degrees. And in the afternoon, like no, no, not... I mean, if you're standing in the not, I mean, in the shade, it's okay. It's like like 25, but otherwise it's like 22. It's windy, rainy. Okay, I, I'm just cold. So thank God I still have this, <laughs> and I'm really appreciating it because I packed only very light clothes, like this. So <laughs> anyway, uh, so no shop update today, but I don't know why. This week on Wednesday, I had, I felt the urge to go through my stash, the stash of yarn I've been accumulating since 2010. Okay, it's been 12 years of accumulating stash. Okay, I've been an indie dyer since 2017, uh, really full time behind that since uh, 2019, and it's alleviated. It's, it's, it ha, it's elevated a bit the compulsive yarn buying thingy, okay? Since I've, I'm able to dye myself, uh, my yarn myself, I, I've, I've bought less, okay? But I'd say that between 2010 and 2020, I've been like a compulsive buyer, like a collector. I, have, I am a curator of an incredibly large amount of international hand-dyed yarns, okay? Like really international. I have things from Australia, I have things from uh, New Zealand, from the US, from Canada, from the UK, from Finland, from Spain, from a lot of countries, okay? From Portugal, from, yeah, a lot of countries. A lot from the US. And Wednesday I decided, I don't know why, I felt the urge to go through the stash and take it all out. And I wanted, it's been, you know, trotting in my head to have a stash. And, oh my gosh, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared because I put everything in drawers, in cupboards, everything well packed, you know, in Ziploc bags uh, with um, 
things to protect from mouths. Uh, and everything was, you know, stashed a bit after bit. And it's been a while since I hadn't had the opportunity to have a view over the overall, you know, quantity of yarn. And I was shocked. And I was like feeling sick. I was like, no, oh my God, no. <laughs> How could I let this happen? How could I let it slide this, this, this far? I mean, I felt like I, I had, I told myself I have a problem. I really have a problem. I have a hoarding problem because obviously I am never going to need all this. Even if I was not an Indidaya, I think I had stashed life beyond life expectancy. Clearly, clearly, okay? No way I'm going to need this in my lifespan. It's not, not going to happen. And so far I don't have a single knitter within my children, okay? So clearly I need to do a distash, okay? So I think I kept everything that's sentimental, everything that is souvenir yarn, I kept. Uh, for example, I went to Rhinebeck in 2016. The yarn I bought there, clearly souvenir yarn. Even the leftovers are souvenir yarns. I'm keeping those, okay? But a lot of things like two thirds of this huge pile of yarn is going to distash. So starting today for you guys on monday i'm going to update i don't think i'm going to do it all at once but i'm going to very regularly update my wheel trade or sell uh, page on ravelry uh, and the objective is to have everything i have listed there gone okay so obviously i'm not going to charge uh, the price i bought the yarn. Um, some things are really common yarn, like cascade yarns or things like that in sweater quantity. Uh, nothing really fancy. Some of those are really fancy. Some of the dye uh, do not uh, dye anymore. Uh, some are really uh, quite defined. Okay, so I'm going to put, to put everything uh, on that page. It's not linked to Tricot et Stitch. It's something I do uh, like as an individual being like, it's personal, it's Christelle selling her stash. It's not Tricot et Stitch selling yarn. So not professional at all. Uh, so if you wish to buy some yarn from my distache, uh, you just have to PayPal. Oh, please don't PayPal me straight away. Uh, please, I will try and keep uh, up uh, keep it up to date as much as I can. It will be on a first, uh, how do you say that? First come, first served basis. Uh, you just drop me an email and let me know what you want. Uh, and you PayPal me uh, with the shipping costs associated with the yarn. And uh, I will let you know how much is it. It is for your country. And, uh, and then it, it will ship. Like, uh, just so you know, I will be on vacation between uh, August the 11th and 27th. Uh, but otherwise, I will be shipping yarn uh, really regularly as the same time as I'm shipping out the yarn from the shop, okay? So, <laughs> so yeah, really help me guys. I need to make some space. Uh, I think it's a win-win situation because I think it's really good quality yarn. Some of it is quaked up is caked up so this will come with a discount uh, some of those I don't have the labels I will do my best to um, because I didn't throw away a single label so I should be able to find the labels associated with the yarn uh, in any case if I don't find them mainly because it's going to be too time consuming uh, you will have all the details on the stash entry because I was like that I you know, put every detail on the on the yarn. Uh, I will let you know in the comments if it's caked up. I will let you know if it's maybe uh, in two different uh, skins because sometimes I, you know, I caked up the yarn in two different balls to knit two socks at a time, something like that. I will let you know what is, if that you, the yarn was already knitted once a bit, I will let you know everything, how, where it stands and the price, it will be priced accordingly to that. Um, I think I told you everything, but yeah, there's quite a lot of yarn in there. So any help will be 
hugely appreciated. If it's something that interests you, don't hesitate to go and see if there's something you like. Uh, I really want it all gone because I need to make some room. I have a small house, okay? And I think it's quite insulated enough as it is. So I really want to make space. <laughs> Uh, and that's too much anyway so yeah thank you so much guys so okay the rest of the podcast I'm going to show you what I knitted on this week and I'm going to touch base on the design I made such good progress so happy about that so um, first of all didn't touch on the Belladonna cardigan it's not zing uh, as such but not far from it I really want to finish it and maybe wear it it would be a very good time to wear it these days so I didn't take it with me uh, to my parents I should have uh, but anyway I'm I will try and motivate myself to, you know to make some progress on it because I want to wear it okay um, then I finished this sock and uh, the, the, the threads are not woven in it's not blocked but it's finished so it's bonfire the um, <laughs> June colorway of the Socks Knitters and Manac. Okay, uh, and the pattern is um, Brainless by Yoni Sima. So this is done and it's the first si side. So I still have the second sock to knit. Um, I know I mentioned, I don't know if I did in the English version, but I was planning on using for my design a big skein of BFL and silk. Uh, for the show, but then I decided maybe I'm going to use it for something else. So I didn't use it in the end uh, But I cast on three different socks for the month of July. So I'm pretty late in the game But still this is Journée d'été and then the Drunken Geese socks uh, by Celia Robert So it's the early beginnings, but I'm really enjoying so far and For this time around although I don't like that I, um, I'm knitting on 72 stitches because there is a lot of cabling happening here. I don't like that. Usually I really like my socks to be 64 stitches uh, and anything above that, I feel like I could knit something more quickly because I usually 64 stitches works for me. So I'm really going out of my comfort zone there to knit something so, with so many stitches, but uh, I'm trusting the process and the designer because otherwise it's going to be too tight, I think. And I've already had this problem for two socks that I knit. They were too tight because I kept with the 64 in, uh, stitches uh, number and it was not enough. Um, then I started, I, I really want to finish the pairs of the almanac actually. So I started the second side of the Druides colorway, that's the February colorway of the Sock Knitters Almanac of this year. I, I already have one uh, side knitted um, and this is an improvisation. It's not a pattern per se, it's just the ostrich plums I integrated in the uh, vanilla pattern and I just closed the yarn overs. So you don't have any yarn overs here. Yeah. So I, I started on this one. I really like that color where I don't, I can't explain what's happening when I need this, but it's so, it's appeasing. I feel appeased when I, I need this. I can't tell you why, but I feel at peace. I don't know why. And um, I'm, I've also cast on for the second side of this one. This is the November colorway of the Sock Knitters Almanac. And it's Cozy Season and the pattern is Grimoire. It's one of my sock patterns and uh, with a very fancy heel. If you want to discover a new technique, it's called the Stallon Souligné. Uh, and it's really a cast, cast on days, guys, for the three pairs. I have not knitted much, but here it is second side in cozy season and it's really you know this this has strong uh, fall vibes which feels, feels so good because although I'm very excited to go on vacation and uh, enjoy summer time I'm also very excited for autumn which is coming back and I'm just you know projecting with that in some very cozy uh, autumn vibes and uh, I'm really enjoying it 
Um, also, I just wanted to share with you uh, the samples for the July colorway of the Sognitas Almanac. So that's um, Journée d'été, uh, which is crocheted and then knitted so that you know how it looks. I'm sorry if the color is not uh, the same as usual because I'm recording outside and I didn't have time to fine tune all, you know, all the specs of the um, camera um, tuning. I just put it in auto uh, and hopefully it's going to be okay with all the lighting. Uh, light is not the same as when you record uh, indoors, obviously. And design wise, so uh, I'm going to share with you my process, although I forgot everything except the design itself. So last week I told you that I had this idea of a shawl with this Estonian uh, flower pattern. So I didn't use the yarn I mentioned. Uh, I mentioned that I wanted to use BFR and silk and I changed my mind because I wanted to, first of all, I needed to, um, hi, Go inside, please. Okay, it's my son. I told him that I wanted to have everybody inside while I was filming the podcast. It's a short episode. I didn't want everybody around because I can't, I can't focus otherwise. I can't, yeah, I can't focus on what I'm talking, or what I'm saying to you. But he's outside and waving hi. <laughs> it's constant is hate. Um, yeah. So I swatched. Just you know, I needed to understand how the pattern worked because I wanted to integrate the pattern in a triangular shawl uh, but if you are not familiar with design um, you first well at least that's how I approach it I first choose the, the, the shape I want to go with and then I yeah Meaning that, what, what does that mean? That means that the shape will give you uh, the increases, the, the kind and, and rhythm of increases you need to put inside your design uh, to give it the shape you decided. So that gives you structure. That's the structure increases or decreases, but in that case increases. So once I decided I wanted to go triangular, I had my uh, structure structures uh, structure increases in mind and then I have this pattern I want to integrate in that but uh, the pattern was uh, balanced and over quite a lot of stitches and although I could have you know integrated the pattern as such in my design uh, I didn't like the way it, it looked balanced if, for example, I wanted to knit a scarf with straight edges, edges, but I wanted to knit a triangular, so I wanted something like, you know, growing like this. So I had a bit of thinking to do and uh, first of all I decided to swatch using this yarn and Syrian sock. Unfortunately, I forgot the swatch, so I will not be able to show it to you right now, but I will post a picture uh, on Instagram and on the community tab of the YouTube channel for you to know what I'm talking about. So the, the, the swatch was very, very instructive. I understood how the pattern was working, um, you know, how the increases and decreases worked together to create the overall shape of the flower um, and how the flower was uh, really a pattern that was growing with a lot of increases uh, with some uh, very um, well placed decreases to form uh, the petals and then you have some um, decreases uh, to shape to you know to balance out the increases of the flower so what I decided to do is to play on that and isolate only the flowers which has uh, naturally increased in an increasing form and try and twitch, you know, try and, um, you know, uh, do a bit of uh, tweaking to add some um, strategically placed increases just to give it this 
shape I was aiming at, like triangular. I'm, I'm doing that because I'm, I'm resuming half and half. So that's one half of your triangular shawl. And I succeeded, guys. It took me like, just after I talked about it to, uh, with you uh, last week, I thought I thought about it uh, at night. I um, woke up very early the next morning and I uh, decided to uh, try and and um, you know uh, write the, the, the chart for this uh, flower without the balancing section and in order to have it like increase naturally into the shape I wanted and it worked and, I, and then I tried uh, over the last weekend I knitted my first uh, prototype and it worked beautifully guys look at this I'm just going to drop the shawl because okay I'm at ease look at this so this is uh, the design as it stands I didn't like uh, I knitted the swatch with sport and surrey and silk and i didn't like the fluffy factor i really wanted something sharp to uh, have a good stitch definition actually so <clears throat> this is how it looks uh really at the beginning of the shawl you can see the two flowers like mirroring each other i'm just not showing it very clearly here i'm going to do better yeah i think you can see them just at the bottom and you see uh the flowers are just um, very naturally uh, growing into the right shape I decided for the show, which is actually super cool. And so each time, each repeat, uh, I'm adding a flower without the balancing set section, which acts like my, my structure increases and then the pattern is like it was written like it was intended with the balancing uh, portion which gives uh, the flowers a lovely crown like here lovely you know um, pointy shape like a little hat and that works beautifully and I'm going to be able to increase really naturally and the good part about this is that although uh, I think it looks quite intricate it's super simple it's only four rows that are patterned and uh, it's very easy to um, you know um, have it memorized so I forgot my notes I forgot my chart when I left for my parents and still I am able to keep on knitting on this because it's so easy to commit it to memory so I'm really happy with that because that's exactly what I wanted I'm happy because I had to tweak the stitch pattern so that makes it really something unique uh, that I was able to do I uh, am very happy that it is easy to knit easy to memorize it's really a relaxing knit uh, still beautiful and striking what's going to be um, blocked uh, the uh, wrong side looks like little you know shells which is lovely it's going to be it's going to need aggressive blocking and because I couldn't it's like I, I never can do something really super simple. I always need to add a little, you know, something. I decided to do a pick out uh, salvage. So it's pretty large. I like a, a shawl with a large border. And I decided to do a little pico here. So I had a, um, it took me a few tries to have it fine tuned to exactly what I wanted, but I managed to do it. And so guys, I, I know I told you I would go with the simplest garter stitch uh, border, but I might do a little tweaking there also. And that's it for the design part, guys. Uh, I'll tell you more in the next episode. I'm going to continue it on this. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next Monday. There will be a surprise shop update. Okay? And I see you next Monday. I've already told that. Have a lovely week, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.